Thanks to Steam, I've been able to play a huge amount of independent horror games over the years, most of which have been interesting, unique experiences that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Notable examples would be games like Cry of Fear and Lost in Vivo. But lately, browsing through Steam, another game was uh, put in front of me. A game that isn't actually quite new, it came out at the end of last year, and it's called Lurk in the Dark. A name which is obviously a homage to Alone in the Dark, one of the early survival horror games that helped start the whole genre. But given the fact that it offered a free prologue demo, I thought to check it out, and I am very glad I gave it the chance I did. Lurk in the Dark is a story based first person horror with survival horror mechanics that offers a free 45 sort of to an hour long prologue demo on Steam. It is set in a town known as Babel's Hilltop, or Babel's Hilltop, I'm still not quite sure. A rural mining town known for its tourist attractions and uh, beautiful landscapes. The town is largely funded and built off the backs of a family known as the Ruggles family, who own a mansion overlooking the town. All goes wrong when several people are reported missing, with their last sightings being near the Ruggles family mansion. A group of local detectives are sent to the mansion to try and retrieve the people that have been reported missing, obviously. This gives off very big Resident Evil vibes, but we'll get to that in a bit. You play as Marcus Brown, one of the detectives who uh, has a bit of a strange backstory regarding his family, his wife, possible events that he might have taken part in. Uh, his backstory is left very mysterious and it's hinted that there's something there, but that's obviously because they're trying to get you intrigued into the story. Now starting the game up, it becomes very clear which two games that this game draws inspiration from. The obvious one being Silent Hills PT, playable teaser, and the other being Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which is probably why my interest was piqued in the game in the first place. This game actually feels a lot like a Resident Evil game. Everything from being able to pick up items and examine them, rotate them, to the multitude of puzzles you'll be solving, and the merchant with the weapons that we'll talk about very soon. There's just a lot of potential here to make a really good Resident Evil inspired horror game, but that's not what this game's legacy is completely built on. This game is very good at creating its own atmosphere that I don't even know what to point to and say this game feels like this because you kind of feel Resident Evil, Silent Hill and Alone in the Dark vibes, but you don't at the same time. It feels like this is this game is crafting its own feel. I've never felt any other horror game like it before and that's rare from a game that's just uploaded to Steam and is still being crowdfunded to this day as a matter of fact. I'm going to take a wee side note here to tell you about the crowdfunding. The game unfortunately did not make its crowdfunding goal but what you can do is they have this DLC on Steam called Shoot the World. It, it's basically, it's not a story based DLC, it's just a way to sort of screw you and mess about with the demo but you're really paying the money to support these guys, which you should definitely do. The reason I call this video a masterpiece in the making is I've never played an indie horror game before that I see so much potential in. I've played plenty of finished indie horror games that were great, but this is one that still has a long way to go that, depending on how it's handled, I could see this becoming a very, very big and popular horror series that I really hope it does become. Because while this game does have its own style, its own gameplay, its own elements, I can't deny that the inspirations that draw from Resident Evil and Silent Hill really really work together. It's exciting to see them all come together, plus all the elements that this game strives out to achieve on its own. It's really interesting to see it all come together like that. At the end of the demo, you're greeted with this cutscene of a man in a confession room, which I'm assuming is going to be some kind of save room, telling you that, oh you were attacked by a monster, well here take this knife, but if you want something more powerful, it'll cost you. Using the DLC to be able to fly about, I was able to get into this room and zoom up on the piece of paper that he slides out and read what it says. The game says it'll have two different handguns with bullets that could be bought, plus first aid and a knife or iron pipe. Now, everyone on this channel knows my thoughts on first person Resident Evil and first person survival horror. I can't get enough of it, I love it. I worry all the time that Resident Evil 9 won't be first person just because some idiots don't want it to be. But this game really has a chance to do something that even Resident Evil 7 and probably 8 hasn't done. 
because while those games are extremely scary and effective, this game is a lot more focused on horror but it's still retaining you know, the first person gunplay and melee combat. That's what I mean when I said they were tying a whole bunch of elements from Resident Evil and Silent Hill and its own style and Alone in the Dark and other series it's all together in a really interesting way because not only is the game itself interesting in its own way, but the elements that are bringing really really work with what they have. I guess all I can say is I really hope Lurk in the Dark gets the attention and the care that it deserves because this game really could be a masterpiece in the making.